Catherine mentioned about 2004 as the first time that uh, the university got involved in e-portfolios, and actually uh, I was part of that 2004 initiative. So in the School of Accounting and Finance, which is where I am from, we have been making use of e-portfolios since 2004. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to talk to you about what we did in 2004, and then I'm going to skip ahead to 2008 when we uh, had some changes in terms of how we were using e-portfolios. Then I'm going to talk to you about what sort of has happened in the past three to four years. I hope that I have the ability to show you a couple of e-portfolios and uh, some dialogue that I've had with two students over the past few weeks in terms of their e-portfolio. And then um, the last thing I'll do is just share with you, I think, some perspectives that different stakeholders can have uh, with the use of e-portfolios. And so that's the plan. So I'm going to hopefully go fairly quickly. I'm not hopefully. I'm going to go fairly quickly through the history. So back in 2004, um, there was the decision, and it was a decision actually that I made because I was pretty enthused about e-portfolios. And I thought about them as an excellent tool that would allow our students to articulate, to connect, and to integrate their learning. And that was predicated on my belief that the learning that students experience happen in a number of different contexts. You know, here some of the things that I will say are certainly things that Randy has already shared with you. That learning occurs both in the classroom, it happens also outside the classroom in terms of community and non-academic endeavors. And in our case, it happens in the work term because in our program, all of our students are co-op students. I think uh, the ePortfolio provides an opportunity for students to showcase their competencies or abilities as opposed to a line on a resume. And I certainly hope, although it's been a struggle, and I'll be honest with you, in terms of developing within our students an appreciation for the fostering of ongoing personal development. Um, the use of the ePortfolio in 2004 was incorporated in a course that I teach. It's an introduction course to 1A students and in the course the students spend a lot of time working in teams so they were asked to do and this was a ask it was not for marks in the course they were asked to do three uh, reflective activities on their teamwork skills they benchmarked themselves coming into the course they then did a second reflective activity partway through the course based on their experiences in the team and also based on some feedback they received from their peers and then they repeated the exercise at the end of the course. In all of those reflective activities, they received feedback. And the feedback they received was not from myself. It was from uh, professional accountants. So we engaged and contracted with professional accountants to review the feedback from these students and or re review the reflections and provide feedback to them. Um, <clears throat> the tool that we used at the time we said to our students, basically, your, it's your choice in terms of the tool that you want to use. Uh, there was a tool that the, port, that the University of Waterloo had gravitated towards. It was called the Keep Toolkit, and it was a free e-portfolio tool that came out of the States, provided by, an inst provided by the Carnegie Institution. So that carried on for four years until 2008, and in 2008, um, we were involved in starting to work on a learning model in the school. And one of the things that we took a look at uh, in the context of this was what was going on with our co-op employers and the work term activity, and specifically work term reports. So within our co-op program, we were part of the university model and all of our students had to write a work term report. And the work term report was basically, what did you do on the job? And our students were saying to us, you know, we don't see this as adding much value to our education. and. So we thought about what they were saying and we also were hearing from our employers that they felt that our students academically were very skilled but they thought that they lacked in terms of some process or soft skills. And so we said, well maybe we can help our students in terms of development of those. And so we identified four soft skills that we thought were important, teamwork, oral communication, written communication, and leadership. We uh, had them do reflective activities twice in each work term, part way through and at the end of the term. Uh, they were dr driven by templates that we provided to them. So we said, here are some specific prompts that we want you to, at, uh, to, to respond to. And in those prompts, we luckily had the opportunity to connect some of their classroom experience to the workplace. So for instance, in terms of the teamwork reflective activity that they focused their attention on on their first work term, 
we could draw back to their experience in AFM 131, the course that I teach and what happened in terms of their team skills back then. And so um, we basically uh, carried on. And as I said, we did the two reflective activities because we felt it would be of benefit for the students to have the opportunity to think about their co-op experiences partway through the term to hopefully uh, get some feedback from their employer in terms of their performance and then through the process of going and completing a reflective activity getting feedback from the employer they would could then use that as a means of improving uh, and their understanding and hopefully some things that they wanted to work on between the midpoint of the work term and the end of the term um, the other thing that we were involved with in the school as i mentioned was we were starting to work on something called a learning model and Part of, or the main part of what this learning model was all about in the school was basically that everything that we do in the school should be informed by a set of competencies, which is the terminology that is used in our profession, and how we could help our students get to a certain level in terms of a set of competencies that were outlined for us by the professional accounting associations. And so we carried on on that basis, um, um, and then Actually, one of the things that happened in 131, we dropped from three to two, still voluntary. Um, and the other thing that occurred over the past few years is that we had those same students in their fall term start, a, or start taking a course on speech communications in their winter 1A or 1B term. And in that course, the focus was obviously on oral communication. So we provided them with, an act, uh, with the uh, ability to uh, write a reflective piece at the end of their course. Uh, in terms of their experiences and also uh, provided them and encouraged them to upload some of their video presentations in the course to their e-portfolio. Uh, elsewhere in our program there was basically only one other course that made use of an e-portfolio. It was a course that was offered to our students in their 2B term, a law course and again template driven, asked them to reflect on their learning in the context of the business law course they took. One of the things that we were hearing from our students during this time was that, you know, they had a concern about this e-portfolio because uh, it seemed to be used randomly throughout our program. You know, there was some focus in terms of their 1A term, their 1B term, something happened in their 2B term when they came back and they had this, what was going on in terms of their work terms, but no, nowhere else was e-portfolios evident in their program. And uh, the other thing that um, we have not been successful at doing at, at this point in time is, is basically taking their experiences in the workplace and integrating them back into their course-based activities when they come back to school. And that's a challenge that we still have. The other area where e-portfolios were used and attempted to be used were associated with the living learning community, which is a community of first and second year students that is run through residences. And in the living learning community, we initially had them, again, do a reflective activity based on a template. Again, we provided them feedback on that reflective activity. And that has kind of morphed, not kind of, it has morphed in these things called student success plans, which are going on right now, which the students work on. And the peer leaders who work with the students in the living learning community are now in the process of having an opportunity to dialogue with their students in terms of their success plans. And that's an ongoing process. We don't have the student success plans and the peer leader feedback integrated yet within the e-portfolio, but that certainly is something we want to do. So we are, ah, okay. So, roughly, let's, as I mentioned to you, um, I had a couple of conversations, or let me, let me sort of add one other comment before. Um, the other thing that happened uh, was in the fall of 2012. Fall 2012, why that was, uh, was a milestone, I guess, for us was because in fall 2012, that's when the Learn ePortfolio tool was added to our learning management system. And so when that happened, we said to our students, I think it makes sense for us. Again, we didn't mandate that you needed to use the Learn ePortfolio tool, but we said it made sense for us to use that tool because of the ability to move things easily between any course-based or other activity and their e-portfolio. And the fact that they all had an e-portfolio that was automatically created for them as soon as they registered at the University of Waterloo. So I sat down and I had a conversation with a couple of our students um, over the past 
week or two in the context of their e-portfolios. And I wanted just to share um, those conversations and a couple of things with you from those. So here is a conversation I had with a 2A student. So Julian came and started here in the fall of 2012. And um, well, maybe that's two. And basically what I asked him, sorry, about was his, I asked him to respond to three questions as you see there. So what did you, in, why did you invest the time to create your e-portfolio? So some of the things that he's mentioned, and I apologize for the text, all of it on the screen there. He mentioned about the ability for it to be a creative showcase, to exhibit the potential to employers, uh, to demonstrate critical thinking in terms of my professional soft skills, including teamwork and the ability to look back. I said to him, why did you use, you know, why did you use your e-portfolio for your midterm work term reflection? He's on his first work term right now. And I'll add the caveat that we say to our students in terms of these reflective activities, you can choose to use your e-portfolio as a mechanism for submitting your reflective activities. You don't have to. So we have certain levels of participation in terms of students who use and students who do not use their e-portfolio. So why did you use your e-portfolio? And his response was to store the feedback that I received in terms of uh, my reflection on my work experience online and have the ability to refer to it on an as-needed basis. And what are your plans going forward? Well, he made comments about um, showcase my academic work, illustrating my co-op work term reflections, uh, receiving a feedback on how to improve, and showing a potential employer this, ploy this portfolio for my, uh, in terms of demonstrating certain skills that I have. Now, I wanted to show you his e-portfolio. And what we did for our students in terms of these, starting with Julian's class, is that we wanted to get them comfortable with how they could use an e-portfolio in terms of creating a presentation. And so we said to them, or what we did with them, was that we pushed out a presentation that said to them, okay, here is something that you can use to go and grab various artifacts from your e-portfolio and put them into this presentation and then submit it. So what we did is we we had them starting in their 1A term when they did their first reflective activity to simply complete a templated document and submit the document. And then once they had done that, what we did, we followed that up with and we said to them, okay, here's this presentation, it's in your e-portfolio. What we'd like you to do is we'd like you to add that artifact from your first work term reflection to your e-portfolio and the feedback that you received from your employer. And then when they did their second reflective activity, we had them actually submit the presentation. So hopefully they had the experience in terms of how they would go about submitting the presentation. And so chronologically, what I can show you in terms of Julian is that we start with him in his 1A term in the fall of 2012. And in that term, Julian did an initial reflection on his self-assessment of his teamwork skills coming into the course got some feedback, we had him capture the feedback and add it to his e-portfolio, which is what this link does, and then we had him react to the feedback. So based on what you wrote, based on the feedback you received, what are you going to stop, start, and continue? And then we said to Julian, okay, Julian, add the feedback you got from your peers. And so he added that feedback to this page in his presentation, and then we had him do a final reflection at the end, near the end of the term, and the same premise he then did the reflection, he got the feedback, we encouraged him to capture the feedback and we asked him to react to the feedback. And so in the winter term, then the following term, in the SpeechCom course, we did something fairly similar. So in the SpeechCom course, we said to Julian and his classmates, we said, okay, Julian, what we'd like you to do is we'd like you and we encourage you to go and grab some artifacts that you are that are available to you in the course. So some feedback from your peers, some feedback from your instructors, and basically he's grabbed all of those artifacts and added them to his e-portfolio. We then said to him, Julian, you know, you could also add your videos because they make two presentations. Uh, one of them is a, self, a presentation they make on their own, and then they do a team-based case at the end of the term and they make a presentation. And so the students basically would take the video that they pro was provided to them, they would upload it to their own YouTube space, and then 
um, link it to their e-portfolio on this page. And at the end of the course, we said to Julian and his classmates, okay, do a reflection in terms of your learning, template prompt, prompted, and again, capture the feedback that you got, and again, react to the feedback. Same prompts, start, stop, and continue. And then the last thing I'll show you in terms of his e-portfolio is now currently he's on his first work term this winter. And what we have done is we've said to our students, including Julian, again, use the same presentation, upload your reflective activity, template driven. Hopefully you've got some feedback from your employer and Julian had this feedback, he added it and then he did the reflection. And this is the templated reflection, and again, we've asked them, grab the feedback that you've got, add it to your e-portfolio, and again, react to the feedback that you've got. So he's got a, the story that basically starts in the fall of 2012 and carries through until this term right here. Okay. So very much his reaction has been, you know, um, he hasn't taken a lot of initiative on his own in terms of what he has added to his e-portfolio. Now, I'm just going to share, and help me, Catherine, time. How much time? Five minutes? Okay. A quick, oh, that's a little less than five. Okay, fine. Now, I want to share with you a, some info or a story concerning, where is she here? This is a, another person in our program, Adrian. And Adrian is a 4A student. And so she has been in our program for a longer period of time. Again, a series of questions I asked her based on her use of her e-portfolio. And so again, let me share some comments from her, um, from my dialogue with her the past week. So why did you invest time in creating your e-portfolio? Well, her, she had a specific purpose, and that was that she was applying for a student fellowship program that exists for undergraduate students, and they have to submit an e-portfolio as part of the application process. And so that was her sole purpose in terms of creating her e-portfolio. Why did you choose the tool you did? She did not use Keep, which was the one that we associated our students with when we started the program. She chose a different one. And she chose a different one because she felt that it gave her more freedom and creativity. I then asked her, um, why didn't you add the feedback that you had received from your reflections, your work term reflections, or your employer evaluations to your portfolio? They're not there. And she said to me, well, I haven't basically felt the need to share my e-portfolio with anybody, except there's one caveat I'll come to. What I have been is I've been with the same employer for my three work terms. And so I didn't feel that I needed to do anything more because basically I would finish a work term and my employer would be very pleased with my work. And so I'd be offered basically the opportunity to come back for the next work term. So, you know, I don't, I don't see any value in terms of adding the feedback that I was getting. Um, and I, but I did use my e-portfolio to share with the living learning students because she was a peer leader a couple of years ago. Um, what are your plans for your e-portfolio going forward? She says, I want to revamp it um, with any feedback that I've received. Mm, okay. Uh, what are you going to use it for? Well, I'm going to use it in the context of any applications for campus-wide extracurricular activities and, and potentially for scholarships. Final thoughts. Um, I like the idea of being able to expand on a line from my resume through the use of any portfolio, but I really wonder do re recruiters take the time. I do not see that much value being added to my, by having a link it to my e-portfolio included in my resume. And that's her honest comment. Now, her e-portfolio, and I'll just show you quickly and then we'll wrap it here. So, what I wanted to just to highlight was a couple of things. In terms of the artifacts that she's added in this section of her e-portfolio, there's a, two things I will note. One is that she has not, as I said, added any feedback or reacted to any of the feedback, any of the things that Julian has in his, and she had the opportunity to do it. Um, the other thing that I will say, however, is that she's taken the initiative to add artifacts that weren't you know, suggested by the school, and that's certainly something that I think is very positive. Um, but they're all one-offs. So she's added a piece here. She's added um, some peer evaluations from the course uh, in, that she took in her 1A term. She's added um, 
the final assignment that they completed in the course to her ePortfolio. She uh, composed her own, now let's see which one is the one that she, my first year experience, yes, personal reflection on my first year was she on her own just took the initiative to write something and respond to some things that impacted her in her first year. So that's a, that's a good thing. That, certainly demonstrating the ability and the willingness of a student to use a portfolio as a learning tool, but it's random here, there, and everywhere. So I think I will stop here and say, if you have any questions, please ask. Stunned silence. <laughs> Hello, yes. Yes. And this one is even more. Yep. Shelly, is that? Yes. I don't know. It depends who you are. If your perspective with regards to the new portfolio is an ends to a means, and the end to the means is to get a job. Um, it, you know, as, as Randy mentioned earlier, um, you know, from the standpoint of, of the process of going through reflecting and constructing an e-portfolio, certainly does help us be, know ourselves better and as, if we know ourselves better we can do a better job in terms of identifying a situation that works for us. Um, but, you know, is there more? Sure there's more. It all depends what you want to do with it. Have any comments? Well, one of the things that we are going to be undertaking very quickly, thanks to Kevin, is we're going to be talking with some employers about e-portfolios. And certainly, I, I, I wish I could think specifically, but I know I've seen some articles in the press recently about e-portfolios in the context of the workplace. And so I think there are some employers who are accessing them in a particular set of circumstances. They're wanting to see proof of. And um, the other comment that I was going to make in terms of perspective from stakeholders, I mean, we, if we think about certain stakeholders, from the standpoint of an employer, can an e-portfolio e e help in terms of selection? Sure. Can it help in terms of employee development once they're working for the employer? Sure. From the standpoint of uh, a department, can an e-portfolio help in terms of uh, any sort of accreditation? Sure. Can it help in terms of demonstrating certain outcomes? Sure. Um, I guess it really depends in terms of how one wants to use it. There's lots of opportunities. Just real quickly, so how do you feel about Adrian's portfolio? It, does it excite you because she's taken ownership of it, or do you consider that like a near miss, or what's your, how do you feel? About it? Well, my, I guess for me, I'd like to see the, to me, the, the, the home run is where there is a demonstration of the use of an e-portfolio to support one's growth and development. So the thing I think, if, the, if she drew some connections between some of the things and could demonstrate that, that there's been some progression that she's gone through, you know, there's a, I've had something, I've had some learning from this experience, this is what I have taken from this and this is how I'm gonna use it going forward. To me, that's the home run. And it doesn't exist here, it does exist with the earlier one, I think. Go ahead, you can, you can talk. Uh, are are e portfolios ever a graded component? Like no. Third year no. Would you ever consider that? That's not. Careful <laughs> 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 I, 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 um. <laughs> it's a setup. It, it, it's, it's, so here's the, here's the scenario. Um, in the course that I teach, the students who do the, are encouraged to do it, that's only part of the students in the course. So I, there's 300 of our students in the course, there's another 900 who are taking the course. So I can't separate the two. Um, and uh, the reflective activities that are done in the other courses that use them are, have a small mark associated with them. And it's the reflective activity per se, not the portfolio. Okay, thank you very much, Bob. Thank you.